Welcome to the Builders Podcast, Episode 70, Ben Gabler, his journey in tech and business, building a web hosting company, Differentiation. Before we jump into this episode, please subscribe to this podcast if you love business and real stories from the trenches. And after a listen, please give us a thumbs up, like, and share if we've earned it. Hit that notification bell too if you're on YouTube so you don't miss each episode. With your help, we can reach more people and deliver these valuable from the trenches lessons to those that need it. Enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another The Builders. This is your host, Matt Levenhagen. Today, we are joined by Ben Gabler. So Ben is, uh, he owns, founder of of Rocket.net. Yep, correct? that's correct. Founder and CEO. And founder and CEO. And uh, you've been doing that for a few years. This is a web hosting company. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But of course, the builders, we like to, when we first have a guest on, we like to talk a little bit about their story, their journey, how they became the awesome person they are today and doing the things they're doing. And uh, what that looked like, what influenced them, and so on and so forth. So that is what we're going to do first. So I am going to hand it over to you, Ben. If you want to tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started on this journey, you know, what uh, you can go as far back as you want, uh, all the way back to being a baby if you want, whatever you want to do, whatever you think influenced you, uh, I'll hand it off to you. Sure. So, um, you know, my name's Ben Gabler, the CEO and founder of Rocket.net. Uh, I've been in the hosting space for about 20 years now. Um, you know, family uh, always operated businesses as a, as a kid, you know, when I was growing up. So I was kind of always around that um, side of things and got into computers very early on. I, I think I started using Prodigy uh, in the late 90s, if I remember that correctly. Or, or actually, no, that would have been early 90s. So I was just a kid and messing around chat rooms or even back in the day with bulletin board systems. So, you know, spent, spent quite a lot of time on the internet. Um, dial up all the way through to DSL. I remember that being the, the game changer and then ultimately getting cable modems. And, you know, I, I, at the time I was in high school and I was delivering pizza in my hometown, Jupiter, Florida, and I was on IRC a lot. So if you're not familiar with IRC, it's it's basically an ugly mm. version of Slack, uh, open to the public. Yeah. So, you know, Slack definitely got a lot of its, you know, mojo from IRC. And when I was in IRC, you know, it was a lot of, you know, just different chat rooms on Fnet or Downnet or whichever the flavor of the week was. And I remember I, I would make like 40 bucks a night delivering pizza and at 16 years old, that was a lot of money. Um, and I just love to work. You know, I learned a lot about business. I would say, you know, I always joke, but you know, the truth is, I think I learned more about business, operating a business when I was delivering pizza than anywhere. Just getting to see, you mm -hmm. know, uh, bookkeeping and you know, you know, costs, you know, how you have to factor that into your pricing and all these different things from a pizza. And you know, I remember one day I was on IRC, and, and I believe it was Adam Tuttle, I think was his name. Uh, based out of Canada, and he told me, you know, I think he had a company called like Hosting Wizard or something. He's like, I made twelve hundred bucks this month. I'm like, what? What is this hosting <laughs> stuff? That's amazing. So I bought my first server probably in two thousand two or so from a company called FTC Servers. They're still around today, I believe. And I had cPanel version three, I think it was at the time. And I also had an IRC uh, server running at the same time. So I kind of fell into this hosting thing in high school and, and just stuck with it. And I had a company in 2006. You know, I think I was doing like, I don't know, 80 or or $100,000 a year in revenue. And there was this new company that everybody was talking about at Boca Raton, probably about 40 minutes from me, called HostGator. I was like, man, let me see what these guys are up to. You know, like they're all over the place. So, you know, I went down... Um, and, and kind of had an interview with, with Brent Oxley, the, the founder of HostGator, and hit it off and, you know, started the next day. Uh, I think I actually even did probably a dozen tickets for HostGator that night. And uh, I think I was employee number 10, uh, merged my little company in and kind of, you know, worked with HostGator for a while. And when they moved the company out to Houston, I just wasn't really in a position, you know, I didn't want to move. I didn't want to leave the nest yet. So I started my own company in 2006 uh, called Host9. 
and you know grew that to about two million a year in revenue and you know kind of it was before vcs and p all the you know money became a thing it was right around the you know the the financial you know market collapse and you know in 2010 reconnected with hostgator and ended up selling host nine to hostgator uh, went on as COO at Hostgator, uh, helped open up the Austin office in Texas, and ultimately Brent decided he wanted to exit the company. And at that point, I was like, well, due for a break. I'd been grinding for four and a half years at Host9, and then another year at Hostgator, and I just I wanted a break, and I wanted to move back to, to Jupiter, Florida. So I parted ways with Hostgator, took took a good year off, probably fished uh, you know eight days a week. And, uh, you know, eventually nice. got bored and started doing some contracting work for different hosting companies and ultimately landed the senior product manager role at GoDaddy. So at GoDaddy in 2013, you know, GoDaddy wasn't really looked at as a hosting company. You know, they had some hosting products, but it wasn't really a core focus and, and it was GoDaddy. And it was right. Yeah, when, yeah. Um, I just, not to cut you off, but I, I, I remember that because I always associated them with domains for the longest time and suddenly they were like, People were using them as a host. It was just uh, exactly and it was strange. You know, yeah. What had happened was, you know, Blake was stepping in as CEO, and it was like this huge transformation for GoDaddy. And they brought on um, my boss at the time, which was Jeff King. And through CPanel, he reached out to me, and I was like, "Man, I'm like, I'd love to come talk to GoDaddy. Like, that's an opportunity to move the needle at a billion dollar company." And that, that's exactly yeah. what he did. So, you know, I, I took a position there, and within a couple of months, uh, we relaunched the entire hosting product line. You know from the shared hosting, which was cPanel, um, to the VPS and dedicated line, which was also using cPanel. And then we had a Windows line of hosting with Plast. And at the same time, we actually launched one of the first managed WordPress hosting products uh, outside of like your WP Engine. So, you know, GoDaddy, you know, I would see 2,600 signups a day, you know, on the hosting back then. And that's something that I just had never seen before. Like the, 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 yeah. the growth wow. and scale and, and just, uh, it, it was just astronomical. And that's where I really learned a lot about agile and, and, you know, a lot about product management in a corporate environment. And I quickly learned it was too corporate for me. Um, mm. So, you know, right at the one year mark, living in Scottsdale, being away from the ocean and everything, I was like, man, I just want to go back home. So ultimately moved back to South Florida again, did a couple startups with Brent and, you know, after those startups went on to chief product officer at a company called Stackbath one of the larger CDN providers out there. And one of the acquisitions they did, which is very popular in the WordPress space, was Max CDN. So a lot of our customers coming in through our website were WordPress users. And I quickly learned that WordPress users were having trouble integrating with the CDN and web application firewall. So, you know, after a couple of years at StackPath and, you know, the company really wanted to head more towards an enterprise direction. And, you know, I, my heart's always been in hosting. And that's where I wanted to kind of step aside and, and really fill this void that I saw in the WordPress space. You know, WordPress powers effectively half the Internet. So, um, you know, the market size is there and the demand was there and, you know, created something that didn't exist. And that's where mm -hmm. Rocket was born. And we effectively, you know, the way we were successful at Rocket was because we built something that doesn't exist. Every single my, every single competitor, we're two to three times faster at Google Cloud. We're two to three times faster at Google Cloud. We're two to three times faster at Google Cloud. I'm like, everybody's selling the same thing. Like, that makes no sense to me. You know, it's it's 2020. Like, come on. Like, right, be right. more creative here. And that's where, <laughs> you know, kind of thinking outside of the box and taking this you know, PhD in edge, you know, delivery and content scale that I got at StackPath and, and applying that to, you know, traditional web hosting. And, the, you know, the, the trick was making it simple, right? Like customers don't mm. understand the CDN, nor should they have to. They just need to understand that they they, they understand they want a fast website. That's where well, it stops. Speak, speaking of that, so, so for anyone that's listening and doesn't know what a CDN is, uh, can you explain a little bit about that real sure. quick? Sure. That so is. CDN, you know, I, I did a pretty good blog post on uh, really diving into what the edge is beyond just Cloudflare Enterprise that I'm sure a lot of listeners hear that buzzword thrown around a lot. Um, you know, really CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. And what it does is it helps scale content delivery. So the easiest way to think about it is if you were Netflix and you were hosted on AWS in, you know, US East and the new Ozark comes out and every single household in the country in the world is trying to watch it at the same time. Everybody going back to US East is gonna blow Amazon up and it's gonna blow the ISPs up because nobody has enough bandwidth to go that far. 
So what happened was, you know, people like uh, Netflix ship a little black box to like Cox Cable, you know, Comcast, all these providers put in their central offices and effectively create a content delivery system that never has to leave their network. Because the way the internet was built is it wasn't built to actually handle that much traffic and scale. And for them to upgrade all those pipes would be billions and billions and billions of dollars, which is one of the reasons 5G is actually really as popular as it is. It's not anything other than it can help solve a lot of the telco problems with, with content scale. But back to the CDN, if you have that one video in US East, and then all of a sudden you can cache it in 275 locations around the world and put it within 25 milliseconds of every household, now you're you're solving a problem to where my house my TV only has to go to my ISP or the central office you know or the um, exchange in Miami instead of going to Virginia. So really, it's just kind of pushing content closer to what's called the eyeballs in the industry, which is in this case WordPress website visitors. So we take your website and cache it in all these locations around the world. So when Google visitors, whoever it is, anybody accesses that website, somebody in Germany is getting the same speed and experience as somebody in Florida. Beautiful thing, <laughs> it really is awesome. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of circle back a, few, a little bit to different things here, but and then sure. we'll get into exact maybe more about what you're doing now and stuff. But I think you, you, there's so much here. Like I'm taking more notes than I on way way beyond average. <laughs> so like, I well, it's because it's the seventy. Like, it's that? the seventieth you episode. Mentioned. It's your seventieth episode. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the 70th episode this is it's the perfect time to do this it's a it's a nice round number um no yeah you know, because you i mean you mentioned agile i love you know i have some agile experience and um into all, all kinds of stuff cdns wow um but i'm gonna i'm gonna well first of all let's, before i get into this um as i circle something you can't see um <laughs> let's let i want to rewind back to to now you are very passionate about what you do and you are uh and when you went all the way back to high school when you were like you started tinkering with with websites or you know the internet and stuff like that and um chat rooms irc all that stuff um what what made you gravitate to that was were you surrounded were other people in your life like your friends or your family or somebody like involved in tech as well that kind of influenced you from that regard? Yeah, you know, I think, I, I think my dad at the time definitely had a pretty creative setup with PC Anywhere where he could log in from home oh. into the office and do things that he had to do. Um, so there was definitely always a computer in the house, but I think also growing okay. up in the, in the AOL era, right? Like instant messenger and your buddy list and this, that, and, and it really kind of, you know, took communication to it to the digital level like even you could have probably argue it you know aol is the reason text messaging exists right um because people were able to just text yeah. instead of you know call or, or whatever you know like i could sit and have a six hour conversation on aol you know with a friend instead of sitting on the phone or, or whatever it was and that you know you could do different things at the same time right. versus a phone call where you're kind of stuck to the wall sitting there on the phone um so i would say you know the whole the whole tech thing was just you know, between, uh, you know, the, just, just growing up the way I did, you know, tech was always a, a good outlet. Like you could, you could really network with people all over the world and just the opportunity, you know, the, the learning goes far beyond what any textbook could ever do. Right. Because you're learning from other people and real life experiences. So, you know, I think that's really what right. kind of kept me interested and intrigued with technology. So that was kind of more of a social aspect. I look back at my, you know, like I go a little bit further back, you know, like the eighties, uh, when I was, you know, we kind of had, we had a computer in our house too, from the early eighties when I was a teenager and, um, Apple two, Apple two GS, Apple two E, all those. Um, and for me though, it was like, I was more of an introvert. I think I was like more of a, I'm going to, you know, learn how to, Learn how to program in basic when I'm yep. you know, 14 years old, whatever I was. Um, and I'm going to create some games and figure out how to say hello and um, and that type of stuff. So, so I like technology. I, you know, I had like, you know, I built a, ro a little robot for science fair. I was kind of always interested in electronics and stuff, but it was never the, the social aspect of it. But for you, it's kind of interesting because that's really, it seems like where that passion was launched was, and it just so happened that 
that the framework was on was all this, you know, internet and all that other stuff. And, and then it kind of leads into, uh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, I, I think the introvert has a big part of it too, because it's an easy way for an introvert to be social, right? Like now over the years I've, you know, had to go to conferences and, you know, you, you end up feeling more comfortable. Like I was not the popular kid in high school, right? Like I went to the beach and surfed every day. Like was a prom king. Like I didn't, you know, I wasn't giving speeches or going to homecomings and things like that. Like that mm-hmm. wasn't my niche. Right. But right. for me, when I went home and got online, like I had this, this ability to, you know, communicate and socialize with other people like me. Right. Like I, I programmed an AOL punter in visual basics four, Right. And I would send it to my friends with their name on it or something. Right. And like, they thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And you know, that also plays a big part. And, and I think a lot of what I've done in tech is just being able to understand, like, you know, my mom's side of the family is all engineers and architects, right? Like building mm-hmm. engineers. And, you know, I think a lot of what we've even see, been able to do at Rocket has been to understand what we're doing. And it's not just like a, I'm not, I'm not an operating CEO. I'm, I'm definitely at more of a product CEO, but product engineering fed, right? Like, I understand the block building blocks behind what we're doing. And I think that makes it a lot. And I think that's what makes it possible to have that vision and, and lead the company in this direction of creating things that don't exist is because you're able to kind of, you know, architect it and engineer it to some extent. Um, I don't have code in production at rocket. I don't think, um, but you know, it was definitely a mixture of that, right? Like not so social at high school, social butterfly on IRC. Right. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. And you hit on another thing there too, where it's like, and, and going back to the passion thing, we're, it's, I feel like it's going to be a little bit of a theme here. Um, but cause I just can pick up on your passion. Like you're just so excited about what you're doing. And, and so your success is not an accident. I mean, it's, it's based on a number of things. First of all, you love what you're doing and you've had that love forever um, in terms of technology, but you also have a, uh, like I know for to be a successful business like today with Rocket and and everything, uh, a big part of that is is that having been in the trenches and and you know knowing the underlying technology and and understanding your domain, and um, I think that's uh, you know I feel you know the success I've had with my agency and stuff. It's a lot to do with the fact that I've been you know doing this stuff for a long time too and. I've done a lot of my own stuff, built my own things, built my own products, built my own websites, done all that stuff. And that really helps me uh, engage and, and, and help my clients. And, and, you know, cause I've been there, done that. Um, and I think that's, that's really good to have that foundation uh, when deciding what you're going to do for a business. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. I mean, customers get shocked when they see me in chat, right? Or answer the ticket, <laughs> yeah. and it's 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 never going to change. I mean, even when we launched, you know, I, I broke like eighteen rules at GoDaddy when we launched cPanel hosting because at the time there was a six day delay on ticket responses. I'm like, well, this is doomed out of the gate. It doesn't matter how good our hosting is, people can't get support with it. Yeah, They're right. just going to say it's the same old GoDaddy and it sucks. So I put user voice inside of cPanel and made my own help desk, and I was doing seventy tickets a day, right, and sitting on chat <laughs> and you know, I just remember earning so much respect from the team at the time. So I was this new guy, the hot shot that came in, was going to change all the hosting. Who the hell is this guy? And then all of a sudden, they're like, wow, like this guy's in the call center as much as we are. Or look at that. You know, we built what we called a bullpen at GoDaddy. We would take 10 people at a time and put them in our hosting um, management area. And I would sit there with them all day and help them do these tickets and help train them in real time. Um, so, you know, it's just. At the end of the day, like I remember when I built a, a rental property uh, SaaS, what made my day was not the hundreds of thousands in rent we were processing. Like that was great, but I saw an application where somebody really wanted their dream apartment or house, and the landlord was able to say, "Oh, can I see a copy of your license?" And I have a couple of these questions, and you're talking about things that would never really ever happen because you don't ever really get to talk to the owner or the real, you know, it's always realtor, realtor, whatever it might be. But that person ended up getting their house because of that feature. Right. And I was like, man, like that was satisfying. You know, that's really satisfying for me. And the same goes with rocket. Like when we see people's SEO results go up and and we see the, the reviews about support, like that's what makes me happy at the end of the day is like, we are providing a unique value 
to this business and, you know, helping this business grow more and service their customers better. And, you know, and that, that's really a lot of the passion part there. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's definitely a customer first thought process. Like, and I right, remember right. at stack Pass, one of the coolest things that I'll take with me forever is in every conference room, our CEO, Lance Crosby ordered a chair that said customer chair on it. And the, 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 the whole thing about that was every time you're in a meeting, you look at that chair like it's the customer. And you ask yourself, like, like, is the customer benefiting from this? Like, is the customer going to be happy? And you just include them in all of your conversations. And, and that's the same thing that happens here at Rocket. That's fantastic. Yeah, well, and so the other component of this is that you care about what you do, not just about, you just not, not only are you having fun doing what you're doing because you love it, and you're passionate about it, but you also you also care about um, the work, and and I think that's really inspiring for the team too. I mean, any team, all the teams that you probably worked with, they see this guy that's just like nuts, and he's just like in there, and he's just he can't help himself. He's got to help people and figure out how to do better and all that. That's that's leading by example, which is which is so powerful. Uh, in exactly. any organization, small business, big business, whatever, having a founder or somebody that's a, a lead that's that has that energy and that focus and they care about what they do. Um, and, and yeah, and I, I, I can relate to to. Um, to it's, it's great to come up with solutions and, and do things for the client. And for me, it's clients. Um, it will be customers someday. Again, uh, we're working on some products, um, but uh, in just seeing them actually seeing it out in the wilds, actually having an impact, the things you're doing, having an impact on people's businesses. Um, you know, even when I just have to go in and, and put out a fire so they they, you know, don't lose sales, you know, you're there for them. And because um, we do a lot of maintenance and stuff over here. Um, but you're 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 providing a service that helps their business or helps them move forward, create a feature that they need that's going to make it easier for their like something we're working on right now. We're working on just it's really pretty basic, pretty simple, but it's uh, a little custom feature we're putting in WooCommerce to make it easier for their support center to be able to find something uh, related to coupons um, and something they're offering through coupons. And, you know, like just doing that and knowing that it's going to have going to make their jobs easier and it's going to have uh they're going to probably you know hopefully make more money in the end but absolutely <laughs> but no, that's, i mean it's but that's what it's all about yeah and i think even you know for from an agency perspective if you ask any of my competitors they're going to tell you we, we want agencies right um for us like our take on it is like we'll give agencies a private slack channel right and that might sound like cool anybody could do that but really where the magic comes in is our team is is just as passionate about the customer and you know, our agencies, you know, don't have to jump through hoops on chat, you know, like they're not 41 in chat. Even if they do jump in the chat, it's still a 40 second response time. But what happens is we're an extension to their team, right? Like mm -hmm. you're not right. gonna have DevOps and development, you know, like it's not uncommon. Like everybody at Rocket is either a WordPress developer or some sort of Linux system engineer. And the engineers always end up learning more about the WordPress development and vice versa. So what happens is Somebody, it's not uncommon for somebody to come in and chat and say, why is my menu looking like this, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, and one of our teammates, you know, one of our, you know, um, staff members will say, oh, well, here, make this CSS look like this snippet here, and it'll solve that problem. We don't guarantee that. Not everybody is a CSS wizard, but that's the level we're, we're committed to go, going to with our customers. And that's why you see us in the Facebook groups and Twitter and, and, and all these things. It's like we're... You know, the secret of HostGator's success was not cPanel. Everybody in the world had that. It was customer service. Right, right. You could pick up the phone right. and get somebody right away. Get somebody right away in chat. And, you know, that's the secret. And, you know, beyond that, it's it's just the end-to-end -end customer experience. And there's this new terminology, customer success, right? You don't hear a lot of customer service anymore. It's customer success. And it just it bottles all of that up, right? And it's like support usability, affordability, blah, 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 like you measure your customer success. And that's what we're very much focused on here. And, yeah. you know, I, I could probably truly in two years count on one hand how many times we've said, mm, go talk to your plugin developer, right? Because there are just some times that we just can't figure it out. 
um, or it is a functional code change that needs to happen. Like we've been working with WooFunnels. Um, they rely on server-side PHP to generate cookies for their checkout process. And we were like, hey, why don't you guys just use a post call to admin Ajax? That way you can cache 99% of the content and then your one call will do the cookies. You're like, that's a great idea. So they actually have a patch that they're putting out now to be able to do that because it's not just, you know, in the very beginning of this company, everybody was like, oh, we, we, you know, we're not gonna be compatible with this full page caching, da, da, da. And I'm like, you guys don't understand. Like you're gonna, you have no choice. It might be two years, might be five years. I mean, you can see Kinsta Cloud, all these companies that are trying to copy what we're doing. And mm -hmm. because, you know, the difference is we actually have the, the years and years of experience of using this, this type of approach. But it's like, right. you know, it's innovate or die, right? Like server side cookie generation is a thing in the past, but if you still have to do it and you can't use client side JavaScript, can't use a worker, like go ahead, use admin Ajax, right? At least it's a step forward. So, you know, I saw the other day, even WooCommerce is starting to move all the order data out into their own tables after yeah. over 10 years probably, right? It's like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> That's massive, and it's and it's and it's it's brilliant. But at the same time, you're like, why didn't we do this at the beginning? And it's just, <laughs> yeah. you know, what, what but, but it's just yeah. great, you know. And seeing all yeah. of these companies, like I think Google with Core Web Vitals did something amazing without even realizing it. I think they got everybody finally thinking about performance, and mm. it's not just websites; it's it's software, right? Like WooCommerce, cart fragments, this, that, the other. Like there's ways to do that without using PHP, and that's where I think you're going to start to see things head in the next couple of years is really this serverless computing for the web that just makes a lot of sense serverless computing so like when you think of cloudflare Go workers ahead. you're writing a script right you don't need to care about how many servers it's deployed on how many gigs of ram is you just write your script you write your function and it just it executes and it does its job and you know there there's definitely a huge need for that on the web when you think of yeah. you know, website delivery and optimization, like Amazon, right? Like if Amazon has everybody's wives and husbands and everybody in the world buying stuff and the Amazon trucks there every day, like they had to scale that checkout process, right? Like it doesn't live in right. just US East. So, yeah. you know, but that's a much easier problem to solve when you have one product. And, you know, WordPress mm -hmm. is, is one framework, but very different products, right? So we can't build I could solve your WooCommerce needs globally, but that might not solve this other person's WooCommerce needs because that's one of the beautiful things about WordPress. It's plug and play. Like you can do anything with it. There's no trading wheels, right? Yeah, yeah. That well, that's got to make it challenging. I actually just did a couple. Well, we had a I had, my last podcast was with a web developer that specializes in WordPress, and, we're, and then I did a little small video after that, um, kind of following up on it. Um, but the main thing was talking about how flexible WordPress is. Like it really is just a framework. And, and from an agency perspective, I see so many different things, some crazy things, some, <laughs> some that makes sense. Uh, but everything oh, from you mean like the people changing the way WP admin looks to a custom skin type crazy. I see that one. <laughs> well, like... That too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I've seen, you know, because with the API and stuff, I've, you know, I've seen, you know, uh, where members areas are actually in Angular and there's yeah. some headless, but just, but they're still using WordPress on the front end normally. Um, or, um, you know, but then you got the elementors out there. You got the, um, you got uh, people just using it the old classic way. You got uh, now with FSC, full site editing, um, which, you know, you, you know, just staying ahead of all that. I know from an agency perspective, like I, I think that's why it's, it's, and one and in one way, because if you're passionate, you this is fun. Uh, in one way, it's fun. It's challenging. It's it's you never know what you're going to get, and you but you also have to have that skill set to be able to adapt to those different things and, and identify them and see what's going on here and figure out what how it was built that some other developer three years ago built it. And you got to kind of it, pull it apart. But that's is so because now you're. Is Rocket most it's managed WordPress? Do you have regular servers too for other platforms, or is it just WordPress? Just WordPress. Just WordPress. So, do you find do you find that challenging that it has all of these different avenues that people are taking with WordPress, or is it? Um, uh, no, you, and I'll tell you why. Easy for you. Because every WordPress install 
for the most part is the same, right? So you know plugins are in the WP content plugins folder. You know themes are in this folder. You know, you know how WP CLI plays a role in debugging. You know, you know how to like you can debug effectively. You know, there's plugins that don't always log output, but for the most part, when you start at the top, you know, bottom up, and you look at WordPress as the core, like WordPress core, it is a dream come true for me doing this 20 years to have this same core on every customer's website. It really is. Because that's true. At HostGator, there was a thousand employees plus because, I mean, you might work on Joomla and then 30 seconds later, you're working on Drupal and then, oh, here's this WordPress thing. And for us, like we have one product effectively, one framework, mm -hmm. and we train our team on that framework. Here's how you do migrations, rinse and repeat, right? We've done thousands of migrations. Um, and it, it's just, it's amazing. And that's where, you know, when you think about the economics of scale, like, like even at Rocket, like, like we can double our revenue without any or minimal support hires, right? Like mm -hmm. our support, you know, the way that we've built our automation and just the platform in general mm -hmm. and how easy it is to use, like we don't, we won't need a thousand employees to support our customer base. You know, so yeah, I guess I did. It's, and it's, I guess that's a good way to look at it because I, you know, yes, there's all this uh, surface stuff that's like oh, you can build it this way and this way on the front end and all that stuff. But really, yeah, the core has been the core for forever. Um, yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it's a good way to look at it. I like that. Um, it's, it managing server managing sites, it's a little, it's a little crazy sometimes. Correct. But yeah, from your perspective though. Um, yeah, that makes sense. That's cool. So I would like to talk a little bit about uh, differentiation. It's a big word. Can I say that? Yeah. Differentiating. Um, so what do you, so you've talked about support and it, it, it's weird because I was like, I was thinking about this earlier, um, before a call, cause we had a little chat uh, the other day and, uh, you were talking about how you know support's really important. We were both talking about that, how like with especially with web hosting, how important support is, and that it's I think it's one of the things you kind of you think differentiates yourself um, is is having that amazing support. And I think back, I, I'm I'm going back quite a few years. I had we had some products, and we were trying to find some affiliate partners, and there was this. You know, big affiliate that was uh, we were approaching, and one of our big things it was actually with WordPress themes and stuff. But what what we were building, we we're building this marketplace, and we we're and one of our big things was the support. We're like, this is going to be the greatest support in the world, and it was. I mean, we had such a great team. Um, I had a team, and then we had and beyond that um, in the company, um, we we could have just done it better than anybody else. But this affiliate was like, I can't sell support. You know, it's that's that's not a feature he he himself could sell to his particular audience and his list. But and and so it always made me throughout the since that time, I was like, can you sell support? Can you can that be a differentiating factor in what you do, or is that just something that keeps people? Maybe it's the retainer part of this. Is that's what keeps people coming back? Is that you? lead with something else. How do you differentiate yourself in the marketplace? I, I, you've kind of touched on it throughout, but let's, if you can recap that and what you, what you think yeah, about that. You know, your what, USPs are definitely important, yeah, right? You. Like, yeah. you know, in the very beginning of, of Rocket, it was very important for us to differentiate on a product and feature level, mainly because the hosting digital advertising is up there with insurance and healthcare, right? It gets insane. Um, and as a fully bootstrapped company, you know, we're still bootstrapped. Um, we knew traditional digital marketing was out of the, out of the picture. Um, so for us, it was really heavily focusing on, we were doing something nobody else was doing. And I knew it was just a matter of time before others would catch on and start to do the same thing and, and, you know, effectively hopefully turn that faucet off. But, you know, what happens is you build sort of these a base of brand ambassadors for your customers. And it's, you know, one of the scariest things for me was, am I going to be able to scale myself? Because I was doing all the support for the, for a while. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, our customers, some of our enterprise customers were afraid of that. And I've got, I get emails weekly about how amazing the team is and, you know, how happy our customers are. And, you know, I would say there's different stages the company goes through, right? Just like, just like growing up, right? And I would say in our infancy stage where we had to penetrate the market and get some sort of customer, the features first approach was massive. Um, you know, hosting our products, very interesting because we don't really appeal to greenfield users. We're not looking for, you know, we're not out talking to DIYers. We're talking to people that are very familiar with WordPress and hosting in general. So, you know, like at GoDaddy, I, I used to joke internally, we were the stepping stone to the internet and you have to have a whole different arsenal to support that type of persona versus what we get at Rocket. So. I always like to say people came for the speed, but stay for the support. But what you're starting to see now is as we're getting more popular, we don't get a lot of questions about speed, right? Um, that's just an expectation in a box that's checked, right? But we get questions right. about, you know, just questions. And it means whether it's people just seeing the support before they buy or pricing questions or location questions, whatever it might be, it's just we've kind of, evolved into this, you know, competitive approach of, yeah, we have Cloudflare Enterprise, we've got the CDN with the WAP, but that's effectively, you know, not our main selling prop, right? Like our main proposition right now is, you know, we're an extension to your team, like we are the support, we've got affordable pricing, like we're still profitable, but, you know, these features are, so we, we solved the speed and security prop. We have this new activity logging feature. An agency said, oh, I had a customer change something in rank math and they're blaming me. Wish I had activity logs. They were about to spend thousands of dollars. I said, hold on. I've been wanting to build this for a couple months now. You're one of our largest partners. I'm, I'm going to get this done. And a week later, we launched the product and our feature. And that's what we're focused on is really just that continue to solve real world problems for customers. And now you can press a button and rock it and it'll track every single thing that happens inside of WordPress. But... It doesn't save it in your WordPress. It ships it securely back home to Rocket so we don't bloat your database, right? We've got over right. 2 million events captured within a couple of weeks of just launching that product. So, you know, that's kind of our approach. It's like, hey, we're, we're starting to create these, see, like, file manager. As, as crazy as it is, Kinsta, none of them have a file manager, right? And it's one of the most useful tools. We built a WPCLI UI in the portal. You press a button, the WPCLI pops up like a terminal, and you type the commands you want just to save some time. And, it, and, it's, and, and that's really what it's all about. So since day one, I always said rocket.net is simple, fast, secure. That is it, right? There's no need to go way deeper than that. Those are the three pillars of this business and what we believe in. And the one that matters the most when you think about the business is the customer experience. And that's all three of those, but also just how you support all three of those in general. So. Customer support and service isn't a feature or a selling point. It's just another box that should be checked. Like you're going to come here and spend this money for hosting. You should get a world-class experience just to match the world-class delivery you're getting. So I definitely would, wouldn't change our headline to be the best support in the world, right? Unless I knew it was an agency that was coming in on a landing page that, you know, just didn't want to manage servers or do anything like we, you know, we have, you know, get a, get a response within 40 seconds or less. And as an agency, yeah. that's much more important than somebody who's working on a, on a food blog that might not need 40 second responses. They're okay with a couple hours, even though that, you know, our average response time is like six minutes on tickets and 40 seconds of chat, but there's just different messaging for different audiences. So if you're going to a WooCommerce mm -hmm. page, you care more about being able to handle a thousand orders a minute versus chat responding in 40 seconds. So I think it just all depends on the audience. So that affiliate, you know, probably wasn't wrong with his audience, knowing his audience, like his or her audience, Hey, I need something more than just good support. Like, what do you got? It's like, well, here's, here's the, here's the solution our product provides. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we had that defined well at that point. Uh, <laughs> that's another story. Um, simple, fast and secure. I like it. Uh, yeah, it, it, that all makes a ton of sense. And I think it still all comes, like you said, back to, back to the customer and just being there, just being massively passionate about being there and, and helping them and going the extra mile has been a theme is through this as well, because, you know, even though it's a, 
I've had products in the past and I've built features because one customer needed a feature or they suggested it. And I said, that's actually a pretty good idea. And I knew they would, you know, it, we would, if we built that for them, it's going to uh, build a lot of goodwill with them. And, but also it's going to provide value to others that are probably, because if they need it, there's probably somebody else there out there is going to need it. So it's always looking for those opportunities. I love the fact that um, you'll kind of go uh, out, out of your core, what you provide too, like doing a little CSS for somebody that's obviously not your business, but it's helping the customer. It's still do I do that with my clients all the time. I guarantee a lot of the stuff that, that I do for my clients or a number of things I do for my clients here and there, or the advice I give them or, or, you know, give them feedback on something is, is outside the wheelhouse of what we normally would be doing. But I do it because we have built a relationship with them and uh, we want to help them. And it's, it's really that simple. And uh, so it's not all monetary, all checklists of the things that we're going to be doing for somebody. It's, it's this is the core of what we do, but and this is what we specialize in. But that doesn't mean we won't help you with other things in there or you can ask. So um, that's super important. Definitely. Awesome. So there's there's uh, obviously tons of other things we could get into here. I'm going to have to have you come back. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Con continue these conversations. Um, but uh, no, so so business is going good now. Do you see what is the future of Rocket? Do you are you guys are are you in this massive growth growth stage right now? Are you uh, what are you hunting for? And, and do you plan to add services and do other things? Do you have any vision for the future? Absolutely. So, you know, our, our growth has just been incredible, uh, you know, mainly just organic and, and word of mouth and, you know, what we've been doing at the, at the business. Um, you know, we're working very closely with Cloudflare on some new features that, hmm. to me, um, piggyback off of some of their feature development. So we, we work really closely with them. So, you know, we have, you know, we also have the ability with a modern stack to move very quickly. So we have some really exciting things coming out. Um, you know, in, in line with what Cloudflare has been working on, but also, you know, we have a new enterprise tier of products that we're launching that will also include some technology that's not in the market yet. Um, so we're really excited about that. We've been testing it on a number of very big WooCommerce stores and it's just been completely game changing for them. So, um, you know, I'm excited to launch that. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's probably, you know, we're looking at first or second week of June to roll that out, but um, more of a, more of a uh, dynamic, so, you know, we've solved the static problem, right? Like static content, you know, we have customers getting a 98.9% .9 cash hit ratio. We, we've solved that. Security, we've solved it. Um, you know, and, and now when we circle back, like when we did, you know, the, um, the WordPress performance thing that we did a, a year or so ago with Kevin on Review Signal, you know, we realized like we were performing amazing and then the dynamic requests were not so good. And I'm like, man, like, what can we do? Number one, like, let's get on NVMe storage. That was a game changer for us and our customers. But we have this opportunity with, with our, you know, our vendors to provide 96 cores, you know, all these massive machines, like WordPress scales, believe it or not, really well vertically. Um, hmm. It's crazy, but I mean, that's just how it's the way that it's been built. You know, a lot of, you know, it's, it goes against where the, the future of like, you know, highly available things are heading, but WordPress does scale very well vertically. And, you know, we have customers that do hundreds of orders a minute, you know, like they'll do a flash yeah. sale on Instagram oh. and it's just boom, 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 nonstop. And, you know, on a server with 32 cores, 120 gigs of RAM and NVMe storage, you know, Redis and all this, you know, the other stuff we're going to be launching soon. It's just, it, they don't even notice. It's just business as usual. So really excited to kind of circle back and solve that dynamic content problem. And then we're also going to be doing more announcements and features around solving some of those dynamic problems at the edge. So definitely exciting stuff. Um, you know, we're always building, you know, we have, you know, we're going to yeah. probably uh, early next week launch edge logs. So that way customers can see, you know, all of the requests hitting their site from Cloudflare, like 404s, you know, whatever's happening. So, so pretty, some, some definitely cool. some exciting stuff. And, you know, we kind of, we kind of pioneered this whole 
edge WordPress Cloudflare Enterprise thing. So, you know, we continue to just, you know, while others are working on trying to solve that, you know, we're, we're focused on solving other problems for customers. Right. You're ahead. You're ahead of the game. Well, it was cool about that. And I'll leave it at this, but um, one of the things that WordPress for a long time anyway, was not known to be good for was like larger enterprise, larger, you know, like, you know, hundreds of sales a minute. <laughs> Uh, that's, you know, that kind of scale. Um, but it seems like it's improving in general. Uh, and there's more and more enterprise WordPress solutions out there. And it seems like you're on the cutting edge there as well. So that's, that's really good. Definitely. I might have to use your hosting one of these days. Yeah. (laughs) I think, I think I might, uh, might be recommending rocket uh, in the future. Anyway, uh, it was great having you, Ben. Uh, Appreciate you joining me. And again, I'm, I'm excited to have you back again because I could talk about this stuff all day. I got uh, all kinds of notes here we never got to. Uh, but this is not a three-hour show, so we, <laughs> we're going to cut it. Awesome. No, thanks right. for having me. Happy to, you know, definitely looking forward to coming back and continuing some more conversations in the future. Awesome. Well, good luck to you. And, and, and work, obviously, I, I usually a- end with where can we find you, but we can find you at rocket.net. Are you on social media and stuff too? You're on Twitter and Yep, I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn. You know, just feel free to send a request on over. All right. Sounds good. Till next time. Cool. Yep. Thanks. Have a good one. Thank you. That's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up if we deserve it. If you want to comment on this episode's page, provide me with requests on topics for future episodes, or inquire about being a guest please find your way to thebuilders.fm. You can contact me there or add a comment under these show notes. Now a word from our sponsor, my agency, Unified Web Design. We build custom websites, features, we maintain websites, we work with agencies to fulfill their web design and development needs, and more. If you're interested in our services or are looking for an agency to work with as a partner to build awesome sites for your clients, feel free to reach out to me at unifiedwebdesign.com. There's a handy contact me link at the top. Fill out that form and it will open a ticket and that ticket will find its way to me. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.